My name's Madonna Green. I'm a historian. I live in Melbourne, but I've come up to work on the John Oxley Library Fellowship. And I'm here to work on a history of the Centaur Memorial Fund for Nurses. I became interested because it, it became apparent that people had forgotten what the Centaur hospital ship was about. So the second, third Australian hospital ship, Centaur, was commissioned in, late in 1942. It was torpedoed by enemy fire. 268 lives were lost, 64 survivors. On board were 12 Australian Army Nursing Service nurses, 11 of whom were killed. Three years after the end of the war, Queenslanders embraced a fundraising campaign to raise money to buy a house, which was to be established as a centre for the nursing profession in Queensland. But in fact, it was designed for the whole of the profession as a memorial to First World War nurses, Second World War nurses, and women who'd served on the home front. And within the first year of its operation, 65,000 pounds had been raised in a very short period of time, and a property was purchased at 337 Queen Street. It was Exton House and renamed Centaur House. I think the, the Centaur Memorial Fund for Nurses is a uniquely Queensland event. It became so embraced. It was as if Queenslanders were given permission to party after the war. There's a real sense of optimism that I think was probably missing. And uh, every general hospital in Australia, lots of businesses sponsored a nurse for a fantastic competition called the Queen of the Nurses Quest. And Queensland has got behind it in incredibly wacky ways. There's all kinds of really quirky photographs of fundraising, it's even things that are actually probably not politically correct now, and we'd be surprised at. The Centaur Memorial Fund was very clever in its strategy. Before there was Red Nose Day, there was Red Rose Day. And red roses were paper roses made by invalid soldiers at the Royal Brisbane, it used to be the Brisbane General Hospital. They made something like 25,000 paper roses and they raised an enormous amount of money for the fund. I think the, one of the most important things about these fellowships for me as an independent researcher is that they are an opportunity that doesn't come every day. People who have an academic position, it's different. They have access to different sources of funding. But for independent researchers, it's a unique opportunity to have your work accepted outside the academic pathway and environment. It's important for the state to recognise that independent researchers can make a contribution. I'm aiming to do an exhibition, possibly a travelling exhibition in the future. Um, I'm certainly going to be writing a history of the fund and stay tuned because there'll be quite a few blogs in a serialised form to come out on the uh, State Library of Queensland website.